Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Bill. Uh, in this video, we are in the Call of Cthulhu Keepers rulebook. Um, we are continuing the Grimoire spell series for Call of Cthulhu. We're looking at the spells in it. And on this video, we actually start looking into the spells that are written and I'm starting to go over them. I'm only going to go over about two pages of spells here. And then after that, I'll do another video next week covering more spells. And we'll just keep doing that until we get through this chapter. So the first spell is Apor Apportion Ka. Cost 10 magic points, 5 pow, and 2d10 sanity points per organ. Casting times one day per organ. A portion of the caster's life essence, or ka, is transferred into one of his or her vital organs. The enchanted organ is then removed from the caster's body to be hidden away for safekeeping and providing the wizard with a form of invulnerability. As long as the enchanted organ remains safely hidden, the wizard will not suffer particular attacks and may even be invulnerable to death. Just reminds me of the uh, ritual from D&D &D that creates uh, a lich. This spell was first used by the followers of the dark pharaoh Nephrin Ka, who would remove a vital organ, such as the heart or liver, and lock them away in safe places. This would make the caster virtually impossible to kill. If not for the spell's one weakness, the brain is the seat of the spell's power and, as such, could not be removed. If the brain was destroyed, the other organs would lose their magical properties and the caster would die. Having one's own insides removed costs 2d10 sanity points and the permanent loss of 5 pow per organ removed. Attacks that impel cause only normal damage unless the head is specifically targeted. Invulnerability stems from which organ is removed. For example, if the lungs are removed, then the caster is unaffected by lack of oxygen. Thus, drowning and suffocation are no longer threats. Removal of vital organs may also render the caster immune to poison and so forth. If the caster is harmed, hit points should be reduced as usual, leading to unconsciousness but not death. Death will only occur if the brain is specifically targeted and destroyed. Alternative names for this spell. Imbue Essence. Extraction of the Will, the Deathless Breath. The next spell is uh, Banishment of Idi Etad. Uh, costs 1d4 plus 3 magic points per ca caster. Uh, does 1d4 sanity points each. Casting time, variable, minimum 1 hour. This spell sends home most trans-dimensional human or human-like intelligence that are under their own volition. It is not effective against any creature commanded by another intelligence. Uh, current, correctly performed, the banishment is permanent and irrevocable. Each banishment is of an individual target, not of a type of monster. At least three people must participate in the spell. All participants must know the spell. More participants add to the effectiveness. However, the total number of participants must be divisible by three. This banishment works by destroying with ritual flames a sigil representing the target. The target's personal sigil is best, but a substitute can be prepared according to the for a formula described within the spell. For the spell to take effect, an opposed pow roll must be made between the caster and the highest pow and target. One bonus die is granted for each additional set of three casters. The spell must be performed in the open air in the middle of the night, ideally in a place of power associated with the target. This could be known haunts. Uh, its last known location or its point of entry into the dimension. The spellcaster must divide their numbers, one third remaining outside a protective circle and the rest stand within. Alternative names, 
Banish Spawn of the Seven Hells, Cast Out Demon, Curse of Awful Fire. The next spell is the Bind spell, which tells you to see summoning spells. So after that we have the Bless Blade spell. Cost 5 POW, 1d4 sanity points, casting time 1 hour. Creates a blade capable of damaging or killing entities that cannot be harmed by mundane weapons. Requires the blood sacrifice of an animal of at least size 50. The blade of the knife must be of an elemental metal such as iron or silver. The blade may be of any size, however. Larger blades do greater damage. If the blade is broken, melted, or otherwise damaged, it permanently loses this ability. However, it will not be harmed in attacks against supernatural entities. Alternative Names Imbue Might of the Elder Ones Ritual of the Seven Cuts Spirit's Bane The next spell is Body Warping of Gorgor Gorgoreth Costs 6 plus magic points, 5 pow, 2d6 sanity points. Casting times 1d6 plus 4 minutes. Allows the caster to change his or her physical form. This sorcerer can change to any shape and appearance, though retaining personal abilities. The form is fleshly, but it can appear to be made of stone, wood, or rug, etc. Once changed into a new shape, the caster has the mobility of that shape. The caster's strength, con, intelligence, pow, and dex do not change. If emulating a person, the sorcerer's appearance becomes that of the individual emulated. The caster can take on only a known form. The caster invokes an arethral tep and repeats the phrases of the spell while expending six magic points and an additional magic point for each five points of size to be gained or lost in the body warping. Only one alteration per casting is possible, and the effect is permanent until the spell is recast to change back again. This spell cannot be cast on another being. Alternative names, Mastery of the Flesh, Skinwalking, and the Black Pharaoh's Touch deeper version. If imitating an individual, the caster becomes a replica of that person, including the voice and speech patterns, the caster does not need to repeat the spell to undo the warping. A simple verbal phrase is all that is required. So if you wanted to give them access to a deeper version, that's that's an example of one. Breath of the Deep. Costs 8 magic points and 1d6 sanity points. Casting time 1 round. The target's lungs fill with seawater, potentially causing an unpleasant death by drowning. The caster must be able to see the target. After mentally intoning the spell for a round, uh, for the spell to take effect, the caster must win an opposed power roll with the target. If the caster wins, the target begins to drown. The target falls into the floor, choking on seawater and taking 1d8 points of damage each round. The target should make an extreme con roll equal to or below one-fifth con after taking damage drown. If the roll is successful, the water has been expelled and the effect of the spell ceases. Alternative names, Currency of the Blue Sea, The Sailor's Curse, and Kiss of Brine. Brew Space Mead. This will be the last spell for this video. Bruce Space Mead, a wonderful golden liquid which he kept in a carafe in his desk and served in tiny Belgian liqueur glasses in such small amounts that it seemed futile even to raise it to one's lips. And yet its bouquet, its bouquet and its taste outdid even the oldest Chianta and the best Chateau Yequim <coughs> to such an extent that to mention them in the same breath was to do injustice to the professor's brew. 
fiery though it was, it had the additional effect of making me drowsy. <coughs> August Durleth, the house on the Kerwin Street. This spell will cost you 20 magic points per dose, plus variable additional magic and sanity points. Casting time is many days. <coughs> Excuse me. This spell creates a magical drink that allows a human to withstand journeys through the vacuum and vis vicissitudes of space. For all such journeys, the effectiveness of the space mead also requires the expediture of an equal number of magic points and sanity points. Com commensurate to the journey's distance in light years by the traveler m taking the drug. Brewing the drink and taking the journey represents separate stages uh, for the caster and user. Different types of space meat exist each with the same effects, but all of them require different ingredients. <laughs> Brewing space mead requires five special ingredients to be chosen by the keeper and requires at least a week of brewing time. Once the mead is foaming and bubbling, the caster must sacrifice 20 magic points per dose into the brew. These magic points may be sacrificed over many days. The more points, the more doses. Each dose allows one person to withstand one journey through space of varying distance and time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once the uh, space meet has been enchanted, the traveler must find a means of transportation, usually a mount, among others. The spell summoned by Yaki can provide an interstellar steed. The traveler then drinks a dose, presumably bringing a return dose along climbs on and commands the mount, and the journey begins. It is at this point that the traveler pays the necessary magic and sanity point cost subject for the distance being traveled. <laughs> While in space, the travelers are in mental and physical stasis, nearly insensible to their surroundings. Upon arrival at the destination, the effects of the brew conclude. Alternative names are Breath of the Void, the Traveler's Portion, the Quicksilver Draft of Blackest Night. And here's the space meat effectiveness. Magic points and sanity points each be expended by the Traveler. Distance in year, light years not to exceed. One point would get you 100 light years. Two points, 1,000. Three points, 10,000. Four points, 100,000. Five points, a million. And so, so essentially, if you add another point to the cost, you add another zero. So, 10 magic points and 10 sanity points might be enough to reach any point in the universe, at least as we currently understand the universe. Or it could go as high as 20, who knows. It would be based on your keeper, the game master that's running the game, on how much you need to spend to go where. But that is cool. Well, I will go over more spells in the next video. Until we all game again, guys.